dozens of tents. Tired faces, people waiting for the signal from the smugglers to take them to England. For decades, Calais has been the last stop for refugees. They wait alone, in groups, with family, left alone in the big coastal town. A house in the center serves as a refuge for the most vulnerable. Children have been coming to live here with their mothers for three years. Nangel and Minas, a 10-year-old from Eritrea, are just getting to know each other. And then you'll become in I was in Shunna. A night of peace in the warm with his mother and two Eritrean families. So we yeah. cook everything. Everybody yeah, together. Yeah. yeah. Very good, very good. Yeah. We are happy all too. Yeah. Rochelle, a volunteer from the USA, is taking care of everyone. <laughs> What's this? Kurkum. Kurkum? Yeah, by English kurkum. I don't yeah. know. What about, by... No, what do you call it in uh, Eritrean? In Eritrea? Yeah. Erdi. The migrant women who come here get to be mothers. They are able to cook for their children. Very, very, very difficult. I didn't think like this. Till they come police. My feet broke. Yeah, because uh, run, uh, running, running in the night, I fell down in the hole. Keep praying. We are alive, so thanks to God. He's my everything. I don't have anything, but uh, he's my everything. I see my son in me. I see bright, very bright. Rochelle's trip from the USA has been organized by a Catholic network that helps migrants in Calais. I love being here. These girls. I try not to ask too much because, you know, there's a lot of trauma behind it. So I try not to ask too much. And... Rochelle has come to France for a two-year humanitarian mission and lives here with her own family. I think it's really important for our kids to see what's happening here in Calais um, and to be involved in this and welcoming families and getting a spirit of that hospitality. Wow, thank you. The next day, Asma wants to try and make the crossing by boat again. Rochelle shows them what they'll need for the cold. This one for the rain or for the what? Do you know snow? Yeah. Snow? Ah, for snow. Snow, okay. which is cold and ah, wet. <laughs> okay, okay. No, this one jacket? For rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this one good for the, the raining jacket. Yeah yeah, yeah. Rain. yeah, yeah. For the kids. Yeah. And Betty. The next day, Asma and other mothers wait for the smuggler at the train station. He picks them up inside for everyone to see. Asma is wearing the warm boots. Will the group make it to England? This is the last we see of them. There is no news after this. Every night, families set off from these beaches towards the UK, 40 kilometers from here. The English Channel is the last frontier for migrants dreaming of England. Clandestine crossings are increasing. Since the beginning of 2022, 34,000 people have managed to make their way across. Three years ago, the number was just under 2,000. Some have ended up in a shipwreck this evening. Others are arrested, including children. Their life jackets are confiscated. They find themselves, once again, in makeshift camps. Diane is three. 
Diane is too. They've already tried to make the crossing twice with their family, but to no avail. For two weeks, they've been coming to collect food distributed by organizations. Neom and her husband gave the smuggler their last savings. It can cost up to 2,000 euros per person to cross the channel. <laughs> the police dismantle the camp every 48 hours. But that doesn't stop the family from returning a short while later. They've hidden the tent in a bush, a routine they go through like child's play. There are up to 1,500 miners living in this camp and the surrounding area. They've been on the road for months, tackling the seas and crossing deserts. The English Channel is the last obstacle on nine-year-old Chad's journey. The tough living conditions in the camp are getting to the children. Chad can't take much more. He has scabies. Their clothes are infested with parasites. 
هر وا پیس و دوباره کات به بس طریق کی نمیانه طریق. Most of the children in the camps don't have access to treatment. One ward at the hospital in Calais receives migrants five days a week. Nurse Etienne speaks Arabic. The staff here know all the typical diseases. <laughs> This Iranian family has been living in the cold for several weeks. These children also have symptoms of scabies. Ça m'est déjà arrivé d'avoir des tout petits bébés qui avaient la gale. On a des gales surinfectées parce que ça, ils les traînent leur gale depuis un bout de temps. On le voit beaucoup plus chez la population migrante euh, qui n'ont pas accès à l'eau, qui ne peuvent pas laver leurs vêtements ou changer leurs vêtements et ils se réinfectent et donc euh, c'est très difficile à éradiquer. Skin should normally be treated daily in this case. Suivre un enfant, c'est difficile parce que la priorité, c'est de passer en Angleterre. Six-year-old Désir a un toothache. Il peut pas manger. C'est la deuxième fois que j'ai été ici. J'étais dans le camp, dans le 105. Ils nous ont apporté ici. Non, mais si il y a quelqu'un... Reza, un Afghan medical assistant, a appris 10 langues pour aider les migrants. موسیقی he needs to see a dentist, but the family doesn't have time. They are preparing to leave. The doctor has prescribed antibiotics. Further tests will have to wait. Le problème reste le suivi. Est-ce qu'ils ont fait leur vaccin Est-ce qu'ils ont des courbes de croissance normales Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres pathologies du coup, chroniques qui sont en train de s'installer et qu'on n'aurait pas repéré parce qu'ils bougent sans arrêt là, depuis plusieurs mois Les enfants les plus jeunes sont généralement avec leurs parents, mais beaucoup de teenagers font le trip complètement seul. <rire> Near the Channel Tunnel, by a road hundreds of lorries travel along every day, a group of Sudanese teenagers have set up camp. They can't afford a smuggler. Instead, they climb into lorries in secret to get across the border. Despite the risks, a few manage to make it through each week. 14-year-old Gassim feels confident. His hopes are short-lived. مش هترز قدام بتاعي شاحنة وقف وانا زين يتراجع هاي مش هاكل هاي عاد هنا من بتاعي زي شين الله يقول لك كلامه هاي سم أنا ذات ذات his friends have cooked something it's a mixture of water and flour yeah porridge yeah عربي أسيدا 
Ghassim left Sudan three years ago and crossed Chad, Libya, the Mediterranean, Italy and France all by himself. His only link to his parents is his phone. There's one thing he always has with him to remind him of home. Daily life in the camp. Now and then, the young migrants get a moment of respite. Washing, recharging batteries. At the edge of the compound, every weekend, local residents invite young migrants into their homes. Nous ne sommes pas une association, nous sommes un groupe de famille. Nous ne sommes en désaccord avec la politique française contre les exilés. Nous voulons accueillir les réfugiés. Nous faisons ça gratuitement et sur notre temps libre. Okay, viennent. On les prend en voiture, c'est ça? Ils sont avec nous. Ok. Ok. Gassim is going to Leo. Hello, my name is Stéphane. Stefan works in a human resources department and has been inviting migrants into his home for two years. Come on inside. You will be quiet. Uh, this is Wi-Fi code. If you have a phone, okay. You can wash, uh, change your clothes, get some rest. You're welcome. لا ما بعرف الخمس يوم اللي كنا فيهم في الغابة هنا ما كان في تعب وفي جري مرات بنمشي يوم يوم ما بنوم في الشارع مرات نركب شاحنة تودينا بالجيك كان كون نجتاني بعد نيجي نرجع طيب كريك بتيجي مرات برجليك مرات بنزلك حتى بعيدة من الجار وكده والله ما إحنا عارفين ما عارفين هنا في في هنا يعني في يا عرفتها but receiving migrants every six weeks can also be a challenge for the family. J'étais pas forcément très à l'aise au tout début puisque bah je connaissais pas ces personnes. Et puis après comment ça s'est passé du coup? Bah je savais que ils nous voulaient pas de mal ni rien quoi. C'est quand même vraiment difficile de s'imaginer de jeunes enfants comme ça traverser la moitié du monde, toute l'Europe, etc. pour vivre dans des conditions vraiment ultra précaires à Calais. La première fois qu'on a reçu des enfants qui avaient l'âge des nôtres, 12-13 ans, franchement, ça nous a fait un froid. Vas-y, commence Viviane. Ouais. Yes, 
Okay. And uh, what does he want to do uh, for a living okay. in the future? Like Kura. A few days later, Gassim tried to take another lorry. We haven't heard from him since. <laughs> Those who can't find a roof over their heads for the night in Calais prepare for another attempt at crossing the channel. Four-year-old Anna from Eritrea is drinking coffee like an adult. Further down the road, a Kurdish family is getting ready. Uh, it is uh, sleep bags. They come from Iraq and are traveling with their disabled 15-year-old son. The last supper, the camp, is emptying out. The smugglers are calling them for departure. They'll be leaving from the beach at Gravelin. The police also keep watch at night. The sea is calm. Conditions are ideal. Shadows appear in the dunes. 50 people for one single dinghy. Children are among the group. They are all risking their lives for this 40 kilometer night crossing. The last stage of a journey that has lasted months or even years. The boat is far too heavy. It's stuck in the sand. The smugglers push it out to sea anyway. The boats have been leaving here for hours. Ten of them capsized tonight. Rescuers bring 500 people ashore. How many have disappeared? Once again, the only traces remain in the dunes. Legacies of the same stories of great fear and great hope. These traces are left behind like the footprints of children in the sand, the last testimony of their time in Calais.